Black Klansman stars John David Washington, Adam Driver, Topher Grace, and Laura Harrier. It's based on the memoir of Ron Stallworth and directed by Spike Lee. It was released on Blu-ray November 6, 2018 and runs 2 hours, 15 minutes. The movie starts with Ron Stallworth, played by John David Washington. No, now that I remember, it begins with Alec Baldwin as a KKK spokesperson rehearsing and recording some Triple K propaganda to the audience. It's kind of amusing as they cut the outtakes in with the finished parts, so you get to see him make a fool of himself, fumbling and trying to remember his lines. Now the story. Taking place in Colorado Springs in 1972, Ron Stallworth applies for a job at the local police station who are encouraging minority applicants. After getting a job working in the file room, he quickly and eagerly asks to move up as a detective. They give him an undercover gig at an event a well-known black speaker will be the focus of, and they want to make sure he doesn't entice the black community into any violence. Compelled by the speaker, Ron believed the talk was just for show, and he wasn't there to start any violence. There, Ron meets the female protagonist, a freedom-fighting soul sister named Patrice, played by Laura Harrier. They become friends, and she becomes entwined in the main investigation. After that, the closest the captain can push Ron is the intelligence department, where he's just as bored. While reading the paper, he sees an ad for the Ku Klux Klan. So instead of sitting there doing nothing, he decides to start a case on his own and calls them up. So he's having this loud, explicit conversation with this Klansman, and everyone in the office turns in complete shock at what they're listening to. They set up a time and place to meet, and when the phone call is over, Flip Zimmerman, one of the veteran officers played by Adam Driver, asks, Did you give him your real name? Oh shit. Everyone starts laughing. Smooth move, rookie. Have fun with your new friend. Which leads him to the sergeant, and to the captain, asking if Flip can pose as him when meeting in person, while he continues talking to them on the phone. When Flip meets these guys, it's like a triple threat of dim-witted, overly violent, narrow-mindedness. While David Duke, the Grand Wizard of the KKK, played by Topher Grace, is like the clean-cut executive that pretends not to be racist and lets his henchmen do all the dirty work. I didn't know what to expect. I thought he was going to be a complete monster, but he's the most calm, laid-back one in the whole film, though there's obviously something deceiving about him and a side to him he's not showing. I mean, how can you head an organization like that and not be filled with hate? Scary thing is, this prick's been pushing himself into politics since 1988 and still going, hiding his hateful beliefs behind political practices, trying to twist them in a way the public will willingly accept them. So, same as the government today, except just more racist. As always, I keep my reviews relatively spoiler-free. I will say they complete the investigation as far as they can take it, but the ending still gives you a kick in the gut. The movie does a good job at transporting you back to the 70s with the appropriate clothing, hair and cars. The hate some of these people had back then was just so normal, and it's hard to think of some of the violent, nasty shit that's gone down between the 1800s and the 1980s. Zimmerman tells Ron that he's Jewish, but never grew up with it never practiced any of the religion, or thought much about his background or heritage. Now that he's getting in with this group, he's thinking about it all the time, which had me doing the same when watching this film. After having some time to digest it, I was thinking about everything about it and started getting under my skin. It does have some laughs, and the story is so outrageous that it could be a comedy, but it's mostly drama and has a certain amount of tension throughout. Though Spike Lee's editor, Barry Alexander Brown did admit it was challenging balancing the comedy with the drama. There's a sequence where the KKK is watching a movie from 1915 called The Birth of a Nation. This scene is intercut with a different black speaker telling a group about a horrific lynching of his friend he had witnessed in 1916, mentioning how the movie had given the KKK a resurgence, a movie that the president at the time showed at the White House. I find it interesting the KKK are watching a movie that represents them, hopefully the only one, but in another scene, Ron and Patrice have a discussion about the films that represent black people. 
The actors that play cops, detectives, and the ones who play pimps, hurting the black image. There are times where it feels the movie has stopped telling a story and intentionally starts pushing a message. Not that anything being told is bad, it just has some underlying politics, giving the experience a somewhat uneven feel. When it comes to timeline, there were some liberties taken. I read Ron Stallworth's memoirs, and the film is about 95% accurate. The movie takes place in 1972, but the actual investigation took place between 1978 and 1979. Stokely Carmichael, the first speaker in the movie, changed his name to Kwame Ture after taking a trip to Africa. That was in 1978. And David Duke didn't become a Grand Wizard until 1974. So in the film, there's at least five years worth of events during one year the investigation would have taken place. Ron did meet a woman at the Stokely Carmichael speech, a Russian woman actually. They fleshed out that one encounter into having Patrice as a female lead. In the book, Ron stated there were always suspicions, worries, threats, and possibilities of a bombing during the investigation. Though fortunately, no bombings occurred, they still fleshed that aspect out, adding more tension and action. Overall, it may seem like a comedic premise, but as it's based on a true story, it holds a degree of significance. It doesn't shy away from just how hateful people can be, and it's interesting to compare how things have changed since 1979. Though it gets a little pushy with the messages, if you're curious at all about this almost unbelievable true story, or you love movies based on true stories in general, I recommend a viewing. 8 out of 10.